Hello everyone. Today we are going to write data to our CSV file. So we have our book app here. We're able to use various different types of the c .net libraries, dictionaries, genres, books, enums, structs, and now we are going to save that data to a CSV file. We just recently covered loading data from the CSV file. Now we're going to write data to the CSV file. So first thing I'd like to do here is define our method private void update CSV file and this is going to take a parameter it's going to take a book struct so here's our variable type book and this is going to be a new book we do not return anything it would make sense maybe to say return true if the update was successful but for simplicity we will just use some try catch block and then maybe a display message so here we want to grab the file which is going to be the same file location as our our load we're going to be using that same location so I'm just going to copy that for precision this could also be a class variable if we needed to access this file in more than one instance it makes sense to put it up here but since we're using book collection I don't think we necessarily need to make it a class variable but it does make sense to consider using a class variable because then we'd only have to change it in one location but tangents aside we have our file path now let's read from this file we're going to introduce introduce a new concept here the using the using statement here which what a using statement does is the it creates a scope block that once we lead the scope block it releases the data inside of the using statement here so this is convenient for writing to files because it releases the file once we're done so we can use a stream writer here and now we're going to use append text now the reason we're using append text is because we want to keep adding to the file we don't want to write over the file so uh, as mentioned earlier it's important that we have this empty line where our caret starts we don't want to write right here and this is where our write line will start and it's going to append it's going to keep adding to the file we don't want to we don't want to delete the file we just want to keep adding to the file so now we have an out now we're going to write what goes to our output file here so write line which adds that new line character at the end of our at the end of our entry which is important this has a new line character so it starts in the next position so that we keep getting a new line for each one line for an entire data set and then inside of this we want to use all of this new book information so we're going to use string interpolation here as we've done in the past and 
we need a com separated value list here and it's going to be in the order of title, author, and book, and genre. Here we're looking at the CSV file that's storing our data. So in this case we're going to do new book. For each of these it might be a little bit hard to see what I have here. So we have a comma separating each of the curly braces. New book and then First we do title, then we do author, and dot property, book genre, right? Title, author, book genre, perfect. I'm going to zoom back out. So this will write to the file, and then once this book is written, our stream writer will be released by the using statement and we can proceed with the program. Uh, we can also add a message here for our catch statement. I should have done this exception here. Let's catch, let's catch the exception and then if we ever have an issue message box show and we uh, will display that message not a comma let's do a space air updating file and then we'll display the air perfect this will update our CSV file and let's do two things now we're gonna wanna test it and we're gonna wanna also throw this into our add button. We want to use this new book. That we are adding. We want to add this to the CSV file. Anytime we add to the book, we also want to anytime we add a book to the, the combo drop box here, we also want to add it to the CSV file that will create that object permanence. The program can close, I come back and it's still there. And then let's also test our update CSV file with some some regular data, what do we want to call this? Test update. Then private void test update CSV. And here we're just going to create uh, a dummy file, a dummy book entry. So here we're going to create a new struct. Test book, new book. So we have a, a, a struct here. And then let's do some curly braces and add some data. Uh, let's start that on a new line. Title, we'll call that test book. Not semicolon. When will I learn? comma author is test author then the book genre is going to be now we just need to pick a genre let's do mystery so now we have a book and we want to test this update function here with the book So this should add an entry to our CSV file. And 
then it might actually make sense to load the data again so that we see it in the combo box. This won't get added to the combo box unless I I do this. But we're not testing that. We're just testing. We're going to be very precise. We're just testing the CSV file change. So we're not going to update the combo box with our test function here. And the last thing I want to do is just mention that updated CSV file. We'll say maybe the book. Test book title. So this should update the the CSV file with our test book. So let's give it a run. So here we've loaded all the books, perfect, and let's first run test add book button. Let's add this nonfiction book here, book added, okay. Test add book button, okay. And let's check the CSV file. There we go. We got our new entry here, just as we would hope. Now let's run the test button, just for a little precision. Updated CSV file with test book. OK. And this also, test book, test author. Cool. So we were able to test the button and the book really it's a it's a little bit redundant adding this data if the button works then the test function should also work but as programs grow and get more complicated it's good to have this this foresight here and now we can we can hide our test button we don't want the user to see this anymore. We are done with our testing. And now we can just use our program at will. Uh, I would say the next best thing to do would probably be delete entries. Because I'm looking at these and I, I probably want to delete them at some point. So rather than having to go to the file here and physically delete them, which I'm going to do now. That is one way to, to update our data, but the user is not going to want to see the CSV file. Typically that would be hidden from them. It would actually most often not be a CSV file. It would be some type of binary file that the user can't go in and directly edit this data. So the data is more or less protected but tangents aside, that's that's more or less a, a, a simple book app that we've built here that uses some of the more complex but valuable tools within C Sharp.net, the the enum, the the struct, and the dictionary, and uh, reading from files, CSV files, and importing that data. So I hope you enjoyed this series. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.